Hello, everyone. Today we will read Genesis chapter 9. Okay, and then Genesis chapter 9, verse 1 to 2 tells us a very familiar statement. Number verse 1 And God blessed Noah and his son and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Lean to your hand, they are all delivered. Have you ever read uh, the similar verse with the uh, verse one to two? Can you remember that we read the similar verse in Genesis chapter one or so? At the time God told Adam, after God created the, the human, Adam and Eve, he commanded them like this. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every thing, living thing that moves on the earth. So can you compare verse chapter 9 and then chapter 1? We can see the creation tone after flood. So uh, creation tone means that when God uh, created a human and he commanded it like this, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. It was what God said to the Adam in chapter 1 verse 28. However, because of the sin, uh, this relationship is broken, okay? So in chapter nine, after the flood, because not just Adam, after the human, after the Adams, all very evil. That's why God decided to destroy everybody, every animal, except to those in the ark. So now we can see that God works with Noah. After the flood, when everything is okay, and God told Noah, same creation tone, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Okay, because of the judgment, because of the punishment, there is nothing on the earth. That's why it is a time to be, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. This time God told Noah. And the creation to after flood, we can also see that not just the commandment, we can see God's authorization. God gave the authorization to the Adam to subdue, so to domain the earth, to control, to, to rule over all the nature. However, because of the sin, it cannot be done anymore. So now this time, God chose Noah. God told the every creature, even the beasts, the birds, every creeping things, I give everything to you. They will fear you. Into your hand, they are delivered. It means you have the authority to control, to regulate, to manage, to take care of them. So this is the time God told Noah after the flood. So here we can see that God works with God created the heaven and earth, including humans. Amen. Then he authorized Adam to take care of his creatures. Okay, here we have to remember God is the creator. And then God chose Adam. God gave the authority to take care of his creature. However, Adam was not faithful to his mission because of a sin because he eat the, the fruit, prohibited the fruits, he could not fulfill it anymore. Now, Noah got a chance to be God's steward. It shows that God calls his servants to work, not to give up his creature. After destroy everything, God wants to uh, flourish the creatures. So this time God chose Noah because he was a faithful. So obey his calling when God calls you as his steward. Without you, God can work. Please remember, when Adam was not faithful, God still can work, right? We have to remember that 
God can work only through Adam. No, God can work with, though he has no Adam. He has the power, he has the ability, he has the competence to do it alone. However, God chose Adam to do it, but he failed. So this time God chose Noah to do it. So remember, without you, without me, God can work. However, if he calls you, if God calls me to fulfill his beautiful mission, we have to obey. It is a great honor to us to be his steward. If we are not faithful, God still have the person to do it as his steward. However, if we have the chance, we have to be faithful and feel great honor to be his steward and then fulfill his beautiful mission. And then second part is the chapter nine, in verse 11 to 12, I establish my covenant with you. God told that God established his covenant with Noah. Okay, I will continue read. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. So we can see here, God established his covenant. Remember, God is the one who established the covenant. We have to remember God is a creator. God is almighty God. Actually, he does not need us. However, he does not cut the relationship with his creature. He wants to continue the relationship with us. So he established his covenant. So in this verse also, God showed his covenant with Noah. As we know, the rainbow is the sign of God's covenant that I will not destroy my creature with the water of the flood. Okay, so this is the sign that I promised you. God promised, I will promise this one. So God's covenant with Noah, we can see that after giving Noah a mission to multiply on earth and rule over it, God promised this covenant, okay? God gave him the mission, right? So what is the mission of the Noah? That is the creation, the multiply on earth and rule over it. After God mentioned it, God tells the covenant. That the content of the covenant is about the no water judgment. So God promised, I will not destroy living thing with water of the flood. And that is God's covenant, okay? How? How can he prove his covenant today? Showing the rainbow. Whenever you see the rainbow, remember my covenant, okay? So here we can see the different role, different task. For God, God is a creator, sovereign God. That is his role. And his task is the assigning mission and the keeping his covenant promise. Do you think is it easy to keep the promise? I do not think so. Because of many variables, my emotion, my situation is not easy, but God is very faithful to his task, keeping his covenant promise. Look at the Bible, God keeps his promise. So this is the role, this is the task of God. And we need to see Noah's role and task. God chose Noah as God's steward. So that's why his task is managing God's creature. Okay, God has the different role and different task. Noah also has the role and different task. God is not Noah, Noah is not God, they are different. God is a creator and sovereign God, give the mission to Noah 
to be a gas steward to manage the gas creature. Okay, so we can see here what we have to do. We are different, but what we have to do. First, number one, trust in God's covenant. If God promise, trust it. Trust, do not fear. Maybe uh, in contemporary perspective, the flood could be the trauma to the Noah. But however, if because he trusts in God's covenant, he will not fear anymore about any possibility of the flood as a judgment. So if God promised us, we have to trust in, okay? Number two, we have to fulfill our task faithfully. God gave us the task. What is your task? What God wants you to do? That is your calling. However, whatever it is, we have to fulfill our task faithfully. And then God will do his task. When you do your task, me too also. When I do my task, God also will do his task to make me to complete my mission. Third one is Genesis chapter 9, verse 28-29. I read it for you. After the flood, Noah lived the third 350 years. All the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. You remember that last week we talked that Noah, um, when he was uh, 600 years old, the, he was in the ark. And he was out when he was uh, 601 years old. And then he lived 350 years more after the flood. What I want to tell you, I want to compare the numbers only. During the flood, it was 370 days in the ark. It is very long period, right? However, which is longer, 370 days or 350 years? 350 years, much, much longer than 370 days. So I want to say that deserve to be patient. When Noah was patient for 370 days in the ark, he could live the 350 years longer. That's why he, he was deserve to wait. Noah waited in the ark for 370 days. He, uh, that's why he could live 350 years more after the flood when other people all died, okay? However, remember that if he was not in the ark or if he refused to stay in the ark because it is too long, maybe he would not have 350 years. That's why I wanna say that deserve to be patient. Wait and be patient. So think about that. What is your arc now? What do you have to wait now? What do you have to be patient now? Think about it. We should remember that God secures our safety and bless us when we obey his word and wait for his timing. So we have to wait for God's timing. While we are waiting, we have to be patient. We have to obey God's commandment. So let's endure. Though it is very hard, imagine that staying in the ark of for 370 days. Oh, it is very hard, but let's endure hard 370 days for our blessed 350 years lives. So 370 days will be your present, but your blessed 350 may be simplified uh, your faithful future. So for your future, now we have to wait and be patient and be ready. Okay, so 
make your 370 days the period walking with God. So while you are waiting, you have to walk with God. Okay, that is my prayer for you also. So now you are waiting, you, we have to be patient and walk with God. And then all one day, God will open your ark and let you go and live the blessed life much, much longer than you stay in the ark. Until then, we have to wait. So faith in forward. We have to remember God gave us the mission also. And then without us, he can work. However, he make a covenant and he give us the mission. That's why we have to do our mission faithfully. And then when God told us stay in the ark, we have to be there. It is deserved to wait because we will have 350 years more. It's not the literary meaning. Okay, please remember God's blessing is longer than your enduring time. Thank you very much. God bless you.